It is six o'clock. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, if you would please rise. We'll ask Pastor Jimmy Dennis uh, to give us our invocation. If you would please bow your heads with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done here today. You said, first of all, pray for those in leadership and have rule over us. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give each one wisdom and the knowledge of your will today. Father, our city needs leadership. Our city needs righteousness. And Father, I pray that it starts right here. God, with every decision that they make, that it will glorify God. And Father God, your perfect will will be done. And Lord, if there's any, anything in these families, God, there's sickness or disease, I'm asking you to heal it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Lord. We give you all the praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dennis. This time, Councilmember Bryant will lead us in the pledges. Place the flag with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please be seated. If Victor Wade could come forward, please. my pleasure to be able to give this to him. Since we want to give a special recognition to Victor Wade, multimedia specialist, who received the Texas Association of Municipal Information Officers Award for populations of cities over 70,000. We want to thank you for everything you've done and thank you for all your hard work. So thank you. We are going to rearrange the uh, agenda just a little bit. We're going to go under ordinances. Uh, we're going to consider an ordinance, revision. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going under uh, public hearing. Uh -huh. <coughs> no, I'm sorry. Resolution. Consider second Odessa College Training Facility Grant. Uh, I believe Charles Carlson and Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams to, to state his case 
Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, all present, uh, city manager. Uh, we thank you all for uh, hosting us today. It feels kind of different me saying that, uh, but we we are we are proud to be here. Uh, we we humbly come before you with this request uh, to continue uh, to serve the people of Odessa. Uh, again, I will, we're very uh, proud that ODC has uh, has supported this. Uh, we have uh, uh, talked to with the finance committee. We we uh, tried to answer each and every question to make sure that, that everything is uh, as uh, as squared away as possible. What we would do with this these funds, as as Charles said, and we do thank Charles for his leadership with OBC and for his work. Uh, we're looking at customizable truck driver training, which would allow significant quality improvements which would uh, increase the, the pass rates of those individuals who are looking for their, their CDL. Uh, we, not only will we have the additional trucks uh, with your support, but we will be able to afford two simulators so that individuals will be able to uh, have, and we don't have that currently in this, in this area. So you, you, you would be either behind the wheel of a, of a truck or you, you can improve based on uh, the simulated experience uh, working with an automatic vehicle or a standard. So we will give you that kind of training. So it takes us to a really, really uh, additional level with that training. Uh, Sewell Auto Tech uh, would be enhanced, keeping up with the increasing uh, technology and computer demands. That facility is about three times as large as the facility that we had planned uh, with the bond. Uh, and this will allow us to take the funds that we have for that, uh, pair those with these funds, and we'll be able to put about $8 million into that project uh, itself and uh, to bring it up to speed so that it can do auto diesel training plus uh, customized training and uh, through CE and other work that needs to be done. Uh, in addition, uh, radiologic technology uh, will be able to bring our rad tech facilities up to, to standard. Uh, and we'll be able to, uh, so that individuals who work either in a hospital or in a physician's office uh, can do that work, as well as uh, continuing to enhance our work in terms of um, electronics, automation, and instrumentation, uh, which are high demand uh, fields in this area. Uh, again, allowing uh, individuals to get the training, get the help and support, and then to get to work and become taxpayers, which continues the cycle of support for what we're all trying to do. So again, we thank you uh, for your support. We look forward to your support, and uh, we're prepared to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Any questions from council? I don't, I don't have any questions. I'd like to make some comments. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, Charles, for stepping in and, and, and becoming the chairman for, for the ODC. You've done a really good job, and I'm very proud of, of what you've done and, and where you're going to lead this ODC. Um, I had the privilege of attending their presentation and I was very, very impressed and uh, um, with the way <coughs> the trends are going and from what I hear the oil field companies out there are, I mean, they're hiring left and right, they're having job fairs all the time. Um, I, I don't think that this is something that we can, you know, uh, I guess take our time on and, and <coughs> do year by year. I, I think we need to move on this quickly so that way we can make sure that the workforce that we have is ready to be available and be ready to take on the jobs and everything. But I, I was very, very impressed with what y'all did, what y'all been able to accomplish, and your building, Mr. Williams. I mean, thank you. Thank you very kind. I try not to pay attention to that, and the mayor gave me a really hard time. But uh, we, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your kind. And I, I too would like to thank you very much because I truly believe we need to grow our own. And you are doing that for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other comments? This is a three-year grant with <coughs> majority the first 12 months, which is the uh, five million, if I recall, the first 12 months. And then that's primarily to take care of the building costs for the school, et cetera, et cetera, correct? It really, it depends on the process doing. Uh, it's an after-the-fact grant. So if they get the contracts awarded and start progress, okay. we're going to start paying them as, as the payments come due. Okay. But, but 
construction will start before we start funding or engineering and, and architectural and stuff. You know, any reason why I mentioned just make sure our, that the audit and the checklist are appropriately documented where we Pretty go forward. Because I think it's a great project again. And appreciate Dr. Williams. Junior group back here that Thank you. your constituents that are here with you. Wonderful group. Also keep in mind we still have a really wonderful tenant in that uh, facility. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and we are, and we're, we're patient. But uh, as soon as they, uh, uh, as, the, as soon as the Sewell family moves on to their, their next uh, outstanding property, then we will get in and start that work. Okay. Any other questions, Dr. Williams? Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, thank thank you, you. for your work. Thank you. And thank you for your vision for Augusta College. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. second. The motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes names. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We I have know you have a board meeting. Tonight, so we'll Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you now we're going to back up to the top of the agenda. Uh, item four, citizens' comments on non-agenda item. Ms. We okay. uh, we'll move to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Move. Motion. Yes, sir. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, we will uh, move to public hearings. Uh, Mr. Brindley has instructed us to leave this on the table, uh, so we will move to item three. We will open a first public hearing on proposed tax rate and to consider levying the tax for 2017 tax year. Mr. Hilmer. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. It's a privilege for us to be here. I'm, I'm standing next to our budget manager, Jamie Meyer, and quickly I'll turn it over to her because she's done all the work. <laughs> <laughs> she does an ex excellent job of doing this. She's, um, she's learned and grown in this position and does, an end, and does great work here. So with that, I'll turn it over to her to present the, the FY18 budget. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Thanks for letting us be here tonight. Uh, this is the hearing for the tax rate, correct? Yes. So the property tax code section 26.06 requires two public hearings if a tax rate is proposed that exceeds the effective rate. The proposed tax rate of 49.3248 cents exceeds the effective tax rate and will increase the total property tax revenues by 8.38% over the preceding year. The second public hearing will be held uh, on the September 12th regularly scheduled council meeting. The proposed tax rate provides for the continuation of the 20% general residential homestead exemption, the senior citizen exemption of 15,000, the 5,000 to 12,000 disabled veteran ex exemption, the 5,000 exemption for disabled veterans, and the other state mandated exemptions all of which have been included in the calculation of total taxable values for the FY 2018 year. Uh, the exemptions for FY 18 do total $1.78 billion. Um, the total taxable value for Odessa is $7,426,000,000, and this is an increase of 2.17% compared to uh, the previous tax year, 2016. Guys, have any questions? Any questions for Ms. Mike? I'd just again like to reiterate the point that the, the, exemption, the exemptions as far as taxable value total 1.78 billion yes. within the city. Correct. Roughly 23 percent of the. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you. Mm -hmm. okay, any other questions? Okay, well, this is a public hearing, so at this time we will open up the floor for any public comment on this agenda item, uh, which is proposed tax rate. If you would, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. <coughs> and we will open a public hearing for the fiscal year 2018 annual budget. Ms. Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, this sections 102.006 and 102.007 of the Local Government Code requires that the City Council conduct a public hearing on the budget prior to its approval uh, on the next City Council meeting on September 12, 2017. A copy of the proposed budget was filed with the city secretary and the county clerk on August 7th, 2017. Um, this
this, uh, this, this is a total budget of 210 billion in revenues, I'm sorry, 210 million in revenues and 207 million in expenditures. Uh, the general fund, um, we're looking at 86 million in expenditures and 88 million in revenues. Okay, any questions from council? Okay. <coughs> I, do, I do have a comment. I, I don't have a problem with the, with the annual budget. I, I do have a problem with us taxing and raising the taxes when we have a surplus in our bank account. Uh, I'm glad the city is so gracious to allow us all these tax exemptions. Uh, that's a nice thing. I hope that always continues. But I think we have to be real careful because it's real easy to spend the taxpayers' money. It's real, real easy to do that. And we can always find ways to spend taxpayer money. And I know this isn't a big tax increase, but it's still a tax increase. And we all know that if they don't put down on it, then it's going to use their love. That's just my comment. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Um, I, I just have a question of why is it that? Doing the boom, why didn't we increase taxes during that time instead of now when you know our recovery is, is, is really a bit shaky right now? Why are we increasing our taxes now? That's an excellent question, and, and in fact, um, the city council last year lowered the tax rate below effective rate, meaning that to understanding exactly what you just reiterated or what you just said, the city council took in less money than they took the year before. And it's been 15 years or so that, that the city has, has had a tax rate lower than the previous year. So we've done that through the, the booms and the busts. We have seen a a small uh, recovery. I mean, we were 21 months going the wrong direction in sales tax, and now we're on about eight months of, of positive um, in our sales tax revenue. Also, the the, the strength of relying um, more on property tax and on sales tax. Um, we've been reliant on sales tax for many years, and then when those boom and bust cycles come, it affects us more dramatically than having a more secure um, property tax rate. It's a small increase, as Councilmember Gardner said, it's nine cents a day um, for the average size home. Um, and, and that sounds potentially a little bit dry. It's $275 a, a month and $30, $33 a year. Um, so it's not dramatic, but it is a tax increase. Um, so, and, and that's a portion of the overall property. But, um, but to change that direction of, of relying more on property tax, which is a more stable base for us as a city, will help us overall in the long run more than bouncing around with the sales tax and not the, the higher uh, base for us. Well, my concern is, is for those who are elderly here who are on fixed income. I mean, the reality is they have to eat. They have to have a place to stay. And the fact is that generally these people are also have a uh, multiple medical complications. So therefore, they're going to the pharmacy buying three and four prescriptions, you know, that are ungodly, at an ungodly price. So yeah, nine cents doesn't sound like much, but to a person on fixed income, that's, you know, they have to make a decision on whether I'm going to buy this medication, you know, or I'm, I'm going to pay my, you know, pay my, you know, my other obligations. So that's, that's just my, that's just my general concern. Any other comments? Well, I have a question. <coughs> With, um, with the one-time expenditures, if we didn't do that this year, how would that affect our budget? Would we need to do the tax increase? 
one time the one time expenditures coming out of this fiscal year total two point two five million dollars. How much? Two point two five million. Two three five. Two point two. How would that affect tax rate? Um, well, one cent uh, equals about seven hundred and eleven thousand dollars. We're increasing the tax rate by two point two six eight cents, which is approximately one point three million somewhere around there. Okay, other questions? I mean, one of the ways I'm, I'm looking at it is, is the way it was explained to me or us was in order to meet the obligations of, of the 3% increase for the employees, um, that's not a one-time deal. We need revenue to for futures because it's not 3% this year and then we go down. So we need it in order to maintain what we have and grow. Yes, that's right. correct. I, I just, Go ahead, I'd call for a question if we okay. could. We're not actually don't have a question, but I will open oh, up I'm sorry. a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Because um, we are not voting on it at this time. It's just a public hearing. So if you would um, like to speak on this, you're welcome to come forward. You just give us your name and your address. Okay. Bobby Compton. Uh, I do work in the oil field. And I will say one thing. Wages have not come up to the employees in the oil field. This is just something on top of what we've lost in a downturn and have not cut them back. It is a burden on everybody. And that's, that's the main part. And uh, I'd like to say this, it doesn't look like it is going to turn around as fast as people think. I hear from our offices everywhere. And uh, I'm just going to be up front. I just don't see raising the taxes on people that have to work with Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward and speak? Now, I, I have another question, if I may ask. Uh, on a $100,000 home, how much will this tax increase uh, affect that home? The average size home in, in the city is about 160,000, but our analysis was on 150. We were lazy in our math. That's the nine cents. 150,000 is nine cents a day, um, two point two dollars and seventy-five cents a month, and and thirty-three dollars a year increase. Um, so, hundred thousand dollar home would be half that. Close this public hearing. Uh, yeah. There's oh, uh, yes. I kind of have a quick question here. Sure. Come on, ask it here. Come on. No, come on now. That way, it's in the microphone. So, so if you just give I us just, your name and your address. Certainly, uh, my name is uh, William Ayer. My address is I'm actually from Lubbock. I'm the West Texas field rep for the Texas Association of Realtors, and I just had a quick question here. Um, uh, regarding the taxable value, you know, we're looking at the taxable value, and it looks like from 2014 to 2017, there's been roughly an increase of a billion dollars in, in taxable value there. So my question is, you know, we've had increase in revenues each year. Why is it that with all this extra taxable value, we're still looking for more funds? That's Actually, I, I can answer that question. Okay. Um, over the last 15 years, our growth has, our values have grown as new buildings have been built and values have gone up. And during that time, council has lowered the tax rate by 22 cents. Okay. Okay. So they've given most of that growth back by lowering the tax rate. So then my follow-up question would be then, at what point do you think that's going to negatively impact the market, the continual reduction or the continual increase in property taxes? When do you think that's going to well, I would argue there hasn't been a continual increase in tax rate. There's but been there's a, been an increase in there, revenue. There's been a drop. Yes, there hasn't been, been, there's been an increase in cost to provide those services. The reality is the property tax revenue that, that are generated by the folks that pay taxes here in Odessa, that's me and everybody else in this room that owns property, that revenue didn't, didn't even cover our police budget of $28 million. We have to have other sources to cover things like streets, parks, fire, and everything else. So, and so, at what point 
do you see that capping off to, you know, to the point where, at, at, at what point does that stop the new revenues? At what point do you I, think I, that? I can't, I can't say that it, will, that it will cap off as our, our job is to grow the city and, um, and that's happening in our community as, as you pointed out. The values have grown over time and that's a good thing. Um, and do you, but we also have to provide services to meet those demands. Makes sense. Okay, just want to get a little clarification on that. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we will. Uh, unless anybody else would like to stand up, uh, we will close the public hearing. Well, I actually yes, would sir. like to add um, to Mr. what Mr. Compton said. He said the wages are stagnant in the field, and it doesn't look to. You know, it's it's really on the fence right now, and I think the open in the room is the fact that the ECISD is increasing looking to uh, uh, with the bond issue uh, which is going to pretty much sound by uh, uh, residents as well so I don't I don't I don't see why we need to increase our <coughs> Go ahead and close the public. we got one more comment over here oh I'm sorry I couldn't see you. Crutcher, uh, number nine is led a court well, that's a couple three months ago I was uh, fortunate to be at a chamber meeting retreat I believe there were five institutions there we had three colleges the county and the city I said through presentations of each one of them and the year before I said through presentations I believe the year before that. And as a businessman, when my revenue doesn't increase, I had to cut expenses. But out of those five presentations, I never heard anyone devote any time to saying, this is what our institution has done to cut the cost. They went on, everybody, the answer is, let's just increase some taxes. It's only $30 for the city. It's only 50 for the county. It's only 40 for the school district. I'm like the other gentleman. I haven't seen my revenue go up. And we had to take, we had to rob Peter to pay Paul if somebody suffers. And again, it's the fixed income. Thank you very much. I'd like to see someone devote some effort to say, this is what our city has done to hold the line on the taxes. Our country. Thank you. Mr. Crutcher, before you leave, let me ask you a few questions. Uh, because I, I'm accustomed to people always saying, cut the taxes, cut the taxes, cut the taxes. Please tell us what services that we need to cut. Because you said we need to tighten our belt, we need to cut services. So just tell me what I would you give like you an example that's not in the city. And it's been a while. But I go down to extra county courthouse and there's five. And we're not the county, remember. I'm just saying as an example. But I, I let's said, stick to city, please. Okay. Then what efforts have we made to privatize things? What efforts has the city made? to so say we didn't add any more administrative staff. Okay, for the city, I was down in the city today, three, four years ago when there was really lots and lots of activities. There was, a, there was a department down there that had one person. I'm down there today, I believe they've got four. Construction's down, activities down, now we got four people on the city payroll and we used to have one. Which department's that? I, no, sir, I'm not going to, oh. to do that. But, but, but that's we, we, you're gonna, we need to be able to say, this is but, the reason. But, but again, sir, I have to deal with these departments. Okay, that's understood. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but I'm saying, hey, what effort is there is there a process that we re-evaluate and that we go from zero budgeting 
instead of saying, well, the department, this department spent a hundred thousand dollars last year, so we've got to have a hundred and two this year. Thank you. You know, I would just add what you said. I, I, I understand that. I mean, I want to turn my water hydrant on and get water when I turn it on. And I want to, when I flush the toilet, I don't want everything to go away. I, I, I want to have a good street to drive on. I know that costs, I understand that costs money. My, my problem with the deal is if we have a surplus here, a cushion, as some have called it, a patty, well, then why do we need to raise taxes as we have to pay? I think the city, I think the city does a good job at, at managing what money we have. I, I, I really do. I, I, I've looked through that budget and looked through it and I, and I think it's a good, I think it's a good budget, but I think we could do the budget for our city, city employees, the 3% raise that they need, and still stay within a budget. But when, when you get your, you know, and I understand you're not counting, but when you get your tax bill and your assessed value is up this year or last year, and then your rate is increasing, it's not just the one, one mill or two mills, we're getting double whammy with this tax bill. Thank you. If I can make one comment, I think that it was very well worth uh, reiterating that, that uh, C. Manager Morton said is that the amount of money that we receive off of our property taxes will barely cover the budget associated with just our police force. And, and we all want protection. We all want those things are associated. We, we can't lean on sales tax revenue. Uh, which we have in the past that it had a 20 to 25 percent decrease last year in in order to provide the needs of this city a growing city that construction is up in, in that regards I, I wish uh, mr. Burnett was here to, to send out the uh, publication of the things that have increased over this last year uh, since January I'm not talking about 2016 I'm talking about since January uh, you know they, they've got to be funded somewhat and, and uh, that, in my mind, is a big number where you're, you're talking property taxes, you're talking about a very big part of the budget needed in this community being the protection of our citizens. I agree, sir. What I haven't seen is you elect officials come and say, we've held the line here, we've reduced this, we've privatized this to hold the line. Or so head about, count, or we're holding the head count of the city. You know, I can speak to privatizing because uh, I've been with an entity in the past that did some privatizing, and it ended up costing us more money than if we did it ourselves. So we went back to doing it ourselves and found that we were doing a much better job. So. so and then what, then what I'm hearing from you guys is, hey, we're just doing the absolutely best we can and there's no room for improvement. And sir, you're fixing the income family. It's got to tighten your belt. Miss one prescription or cut, cut a pill in half. Well, but I'm not saying we're doing everything perfect. We're not. But there's areas we've looked at privatizing, the garbage. We can't do it and keep your rate where it's at. So, okay, but we've also privatized our, we're actually self-insured when it comes to our employees because we've been able to keep that lower because you've seen what insurance rates have done, 50, 60% increases. We kept ours to the low end of that scale. That's something that's been done, it's fantastic. Unfortunately, we don't let that out and that's our, our error. But there are areas we have done that. We've looked at even selling your garbage. We were looking at selling your garbage to be able to bring revenue in. But this council has also done some fantastic things. We sold your toilet water and have started reworking on the water treatment plant at someone else's expense. So we've done some things very well. We're going to get $110 million on Pioneer because we sold your toilet water, we were putting down on Ann's Girl. And that, you don't see in any other cities. That's things we have come up with 
and we've done it. This council's been fantastic to do it. So. Maybe, maybe part of it is, as we have in so many places, we have a lack of communication of I those agree. good things coming to our, our taxpayers. Well, unfortunately, the media doesn't cover the good things. Media, media typically covers the bad things. So, thank you. What, thank you. Point, thank Perfect. you. Thank point. you so much. Donald Ray? Yes, sir. Can you answer what type of effect will this have on the quality of life overall? You know, just this tax increase. Yeah. What? Will this have some type of effect on the quality, overall quality of life here in Odessa? I think you have to look at, in the past, what we've done, how much we spent on parks to make things better, how much we spent on roads to make things better. Unfortunately, roads are sky high. We're spending $11 million from Andrews Highway to Grandview on University. Why? Because you can't drive down that street without bumping somebody. We're doing things like that. So as far as quality of life, I'll let you hand that off to you. Well, can I, can I say one thing? During those 15 years when we dropped the tax rate by 22 cents, we also issued um, $53 million to work on parks and streets without impacting the tax rate. We've issued $79, $79 million to replace old water and sewer lines in the city without impacting the tax rate. So that does affect quality of life. The council over the last 15 years, and the councils has done an excellent job of balancing the need for revenue and giving some of that growth back to the community. And they have reduced the tax rate by that 22 cents. Um, this is the first time in 15 years that we're actually talking about a tax rate increase. Um, yes, it's, it's unpleasant, but it's it's necessary to provide the services that we that our citizens want and ask for and again the revenue that we get from property tax for the general fund does not even cover the police budget of 28 million dollars um, it's it's a necessary evil I, I can sit here and say hey we could get rid of the property tax altogether we just put uh, on everybody's water bill we'll put a we'll buy the the number of water bill accounts that we have, divide that 28 million by that number, and guess what? The average bill to every citizen would be about $700 a year. But that is unfair to citizens that may have a $50,000 house and they're currently paying the city only $200 a year versus somebody that has a million dollar house and they're currently paying $2,000 a year. That's why property tax is, it's, it's tax, it's, 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 it's evil necessity but it's a fair way to do it so it's based on the property value of your house but I, don't, I don't disagree with you i don't disagree with you there Richard, but, uh, i mean you said that uh the people absorb the uh tax cut uh, however I, I think the thing that we're not really speaking about is the inflation the inflation inflation that has you know, everything has gone up. um you know all the way down to <coughs> on show. So these people are still paying the inflated prices. You know, the oil flow has gone down, but the prices around here have not. So if we were to tax them or increase the taxes, you're, you're taking additional pennies out of their pocket. That you know, a lot of people are not sitting on a lot of cash, so to speak. Sorry, Sorry just uh, name and your address. Brent Sims, uh, 1516 Englewood Lane, and I'm the current uh, Odessa Board of Realtors President. And some things that I'd like to um, concern about property ownership is that we had the, the housing bubble however six, six years ago, seven years ago, and our government's going back to the housing bubble. We have just recently received that um, lenders are lending on 50% debt to income ratio. And that's on gross income. So when you when you think of gross income and someone making five thousand a year and they are qualified on maybe a twenty five hundred dollar loan, that doesn't go very far. And when you take into account currently that the city's doing a tax increase, proposing county's proposing, the ISD is proposing one, the hospital is um, proposing one. 
and then the bonds on top of that and whatever else, and you include the hailstorm and insurance companies raising rates along with it, you're going to see a negative impact on home ownership. People that were at $2,500, they were get making their payment, now goes up when you include all those things. You're talking uh, insurance, maybe another $100, $200 a month. You're going to find a negative impact on home ownership. Foreclosures, the people that were paying those property taxes no longer can afford home ownership. Okay, Rental so side. Just a question. As a chair of the, the uh, realtors, what's the average time on the market? We are at 63 days is the last time I saw from active to under contract and then you had another 30 days. So where was that last year? Uh, we're, we're down a little bit with that. And but the year before? We'll have that. Wasn't it 90 something yeah. Yeah, last okay. year and, and some for that And then you about. talk about property owners that are leasing homes. That's gonna be passed on to the tenants and you know with the with the rate hike on rental and I, we've talked about affordable housing in the area I just think that with all of these things coming it may be something that we need to really look at and sit down with numbers to figure out now, and, you know but the bond is up to the people so absolutely that's up to the voters that's, absolutely and we don't have anything to do with that so I understand okay. but it's going to be asked of the taxpayers themselves as well whether it goes through or not. Go you know. well, thank you, sir. Hey. One, one, uh, one question I would ask, Conrad, is what, uh, based on last year's budget, we, 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 we met our budget last year, right? And we come out ahead probably. I, I wouldn't tell you now that exactly what, but just a, just a close ballpark estimate. How, how much does it look like we're going to come out at the end of the year, at the end of this? budget year ahead. Well, with all our revenue line items, the main, as you know, we are, our big three are property sales and franchise tax. That, that, that's 70. But we're going to have plus much percent. more money. And sales tax is, is the one that, that fluctuates that we were trying to get it. And it's probably four to five million dollars. We we have another month. Um, we go to September 30th in this fiscal year. Um, based on how things are coming in, we're Four to five million above in our sales tax, um, okay. but at so, the same time, as 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 our city manager said, our our um, our police budget is is around twenty eight plus million, and our property tax intake is about twenty six point eight or something like that. So so um and and as Councilmember Graf was mentioning, the tough the tough thing is, do you want do you want your response time to go from four minutes to five minutes? Do you want, I mean, it's tough cutting when, when you're used to We're that. not asking to, we're, we didn't cut, we didn't cut anything in this kind of budget. Right. We didn't cut anything. All I'm, all I'm saying is this, we're gonna end up on right. the positive side. Let's just say $4 right. million. Dollars. We're, let's, we're, say, let's just say $4 million, right? Budget is, is proposed. Okay, if we million. have, we, we have, if you take, if you take out the, 1.3 million that we're going to raise the taxes. If you take that off of the budget this year, took that revenue right off the top of it, you still got a balanced budget with some left over, right? Um, yeah. Providing sales tax does what we consider. And I, I know we budgeted conservatively, but you guys always do that. You always do that. My point is, if we were sitting here in the shape that the county did, I'd say, you know what, guys, we're broke. We, we don't have any choice but to bump it a little bit. Understand that. But the city's not in that point. As the mayor said, we're not worried about these other tax entities right here at this table. We're, we're looking at the city of Odessa. We've got a patty, a cushion. And I don't think government should overtax people, whether it's stormwater drainage, Is another subject. We're taxing people. That's all my point. I I I, I want to make sure. I, I, I don't want to cut these guys back. I want to make. I want to cut their budget back with their response time to go down. I never would. I 
I would never be a part of anything like that. We don't have to do that. That's my point. We don't have to do that. Maybe next year, maybe we've got it. Yeah. Two or three percent. Two or three percent. But this year, we don't. Council Member Gardner, that's that was just an easy amount. I mean, comparison there. There's all the different functions that, as you know, that the city provides, um, and and of course we can do as the council wants to do, and and will it be noticed dramatically? Probably not, not one year. But I mean, if you continue down that road, probably. I mean, as you go forward. But it's just the philosophy of, of the governing body deciding how we want, what, do, what services and, and, and products do we want to provide our residents and at what cost. Right. And what, I, what do they want? I would just like to I mean, it, it is a necessary evil tax, I understand it. But why doing a downturn? That's, that's my biggest question. Right. And, and we're considering like the last eight months is, has been a, an uptick a substantial uptick. Um, our, as, as we mentioned, we'll be four or five million dollars over in our sales tax projections than what we did in the prior year. We were seven to eight million below. So I mean, it was a huge hit. I mean, when we had the downturn going on. So so that fluctuation is what we're trying to get away from a little bit to provide the more responsive government to utilize a regressive tax instead. Of is, is what the thought process. Okay. What's the uh, what's this uh, personal services on the current expenditure of seventy eight point eight million? What does that entail? Um, that's all the personnel in the city. The cost to, to run the city. I, I, I think all the all the cost of personnel, and that's that is the bulk cost of of running, of running a city. So that's payroll. It's, it's all in payroll the, benefits, uh, all the personnel related costs. Okay. During during the budget workshop, we presented you with two options. One was a possible tax increase. The other was keeping it at the effective rate, basically. And we we shared with you the needs of the departments who had over $16 million in, in needs. And we presented a possibility of a 3% pay increase versus uh, not doing that. Staff's prepared to do whatever council desires to do, but at this point, staff is recommending this tax rate. Okay, we're not voting on anything tonight. This is just a public hearing. So, uh, is there any more comments from the public? Okay, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, we'll move to ordinances. Consider an ordinance revision of the proposed new fee structure at Ratliff Ranch Golf Course. Mr. Patton. Mr. Patton, you're limited to three minutes. Just three? I can make this fast. No doubt. Uh, during the budget process, uh, I do want to note that we look at all of our numbers very closely. We monitor that very close, and, and uh, Chris helps me with that. Does a great job at it. Uh, during this budget process, we did see a little bit of a shortfall due to increases in uh, the pumping costs for getting water to us. That's always uh, interesting every year because the CMWD does charge us electrical costs to get the water uh, to the golf course. Got to have some water to get uh, the grass green, and. Um, and in addition to that, we are freezing two positions. We are cutting back and at the golf course, but uh, to make a lot of this balance out as far as our budget, we are gonna increase our prices. And a couple of things I will note about those price increases. There is a $3 increase in our most popular weekend rate. And there's also a $3 increase in our most popular uh, the weekday rate. And those are the two rates that are going to go up $3 um, basically, and with that, it's going to uh, get us, I think, closer to being in the black and maintaining in the black, and uh, on, I think, a better path than what we've been reluctant in the past to make some significant increases. I think to offset that and still give people the opportunity to have some recreation, those that are avid golfers, we did go down in the annual rate passes, so if you play 54 times, you're basically going to zero out in those costs and so that's an added value if you are um, uh, a regular at Bradley Branch we did make the concessions and reduce the annual pass rate so that is a discount rate of $500 and that's, that is going to be a good deal especially for those that have some problems with um, the budgeting personal finances they've got the break there with the annual pass our weekend weekday rate is our most popular 
rates, and those are uh, everything's going to be increased, but those are the most two. We're still rounds driven. Um, we calculated this based on our um, lowest year of rounds, which is about 39,000 rounds. So I think we've got a good recommendation for a new fee structure out there. A lot of golf. Any questions from council? Yes, I do. Uh, how do our rates compare? Are we the same, higher, less than the other golf courses in town? In town? In Odessa. No, or no we're significantly above uh, our competitor, Sunset. Now, we, we don't come any, we're close to the country club, but that's a whole different type of facility. It's being private driven. Our biggest competitor is Hogan over in Midland, and they're about to go up on their rates. And surprisingly, Andrews Country Club is um, our biggest competitor also. And um, we have a table of comparison that is attached to the agenda item where we have noted all those rates. And we will be right in line with Nueva Vista, which is pretty much our about the same size as what we are in Midland, about the same comparison, but they don't do as near as many rounds. They do about as half as many rounds. Um, Nueva will still be um, about a dollar higher than we will be on our weekday rate, on our weekday rates. So real close to that. On the weekend rates, we will actually be a dollar higher than the wave at this time. Um, and sunset is $27, will be $32. So um, I think the market and where we are with the quality of golf that we provide and the condition of the course of where we are today, that it can support this type of a fee structure. Um, we've been very well blessed with a lot of rain and that course is green and it's beautiful. It is really nice this time of year, this time of year. And, and um, we've got some good maintenance crew that's kept up with it. And uh, even though limited crew, because as I did mention, we've frozen two positions and that started quite some time ago. And we've made it through our most busiest part of the season, minus two people that we've had in the past. Great, other questions? Sure. Steve, they do a great job out there. Thank you for everything you do. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Um, at this point, I'll set the uh, move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we have no appointments to the MOUTD right now. Uh, we do have two the cable franchise. I'd like to reappoint Nathan. I'm sorry, is that Martha Simon? Yeah. Wait. We got Nathan. <laughs> you want to reappoint Nathan? And. Yes, I would like to reappoint Nathan. Okay. Who was that again? Reappoint Nathan Beaver. Okay. Beaver. 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 Indiana Beaver Juliana. Okay, uh, Odessa Housing Corporations. I would like to comment in regards to the fact that Odessa Housing Finance has a large, large project going on right now mm -hmm. on 87th Street. And you know, one of the uh, one of the appointees um, is, is is the uh, president of, of the uh, Odessa Housing. has been involved for numerous years, and uh, uh, from Jill Miller, who runs the uh, the Odessa Housing Finance Corporation, as well as some of the other members, who had thought it would be very, very prudent to uh, continue her appointment for maybe a year. Uh, I, do not think it fits the uh, the uh, bylaws of Odessa Housing Finance Corporation, but they are changeable according to what I understand from uh, Mr. Long. And I think it would be prudent for us with the large project to for Cruz and uh, Connie to appoint them to their regular terms and, and Melanie to a one-year term for completion of that project. You know, Dewey, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but to me, bylaws are bylaws. We, all of us, have term limits. And I don't care <coughs> how good a job you are doing, uh, your term limit's not going to be expen extended. But the, weren't the bylaws. I, I know she's a lawyer. I know she does it for free. Weren't the bylaws uh, changed at the city? there are no other lawyers that would do it. For, ten, for no terms? Weren't the terms the here at the changed. city for two years? Done. My understanding when we appointed last year, where are you? Oh, there you are. You weren't changed when we reappointed those other two. Is that right? That's correct. 
But I'm, I'm talking about the city of Odessa. We're not the terms of the city of Odessa for it's a council of change. Bylaws. Were they not changed from two, four, Larry, at one time? Yeah, bylaws can be changed. It's just the bylaws, bylaws can be changed. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, aware the of the city council the members' term before. did change by going to the voters, and they okay. supported mm -hmm. the, the change to a four-year term. Okay, well, let's go ahead and approve. I mean, we're not doing anything in LUTD. Let's go ahead and approve the franchise committee. That way, then we can move on to the next one. Uh, so, do we have a motion to appoint these two back onto the cable franchise committee? Mm -hmm. okay. Motion. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, cable franchise. Um, now, I need a nomination for uh, Odessa Housing Finance. Uh, putting Cruz back on and putting Connie back on. In a one year term for Melanie would be my motion. Okay, that's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion and second. Uh, what was the motion? The motion was to put Cruz and Connie on for two years and Melanie for one. Is that right, Dewey? Yes, sir. It's a three year term. Is that their the three models? years from Cruz and I mean, okay. right. Yes. Oh, I thought they were two. Right. Okay, that's no, three. three. Can you, can you no, kind of enlighten us on this? Is, is the motion with the amendment of the bylaws to? Yes, that's what I mentioned beforehand when we were talking about being so, able to make that happen. But Dewey, there are ways that you change the bylaws and it's not with us sitting here saying, oh, y'all go change your bylaws. There are steps that you follow to change bylaws. <coughs> there have to be notices, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you just don't pull rabbits out of hats. Well, you don't stop continuity on a million dollar project either. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are we, are we're going to have a discussion? Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Um, Connie, I have a question. Um, how often do you use uh, legal advice or do I need to have a document read um, frequently? So at, at the end of the day, I mean, this is a huge project, right? In other words, and Obviously, like you, you just told me, I mean, we get free advice. I mean, and, and when we're, money's tight and everything else, it's, it's, a good, it's good to have somebody with that kind of experience. Uh, the, the point I want to make is that I, I think it's important that we do keep Melanie on there because to see out a, a project. But at the, at the same time, we need to do steps to make sure that we have somebody to take over. Because no matter what, even if you, let's say this doesn't pass, you're going to have to find somebody, right? So and we do have, like, we do have uh, legal counsel, like Hanson, our legal attorney, she can take care of that consulting. But now that he's, of course, he's going to have a big issue because it um, but I, wa I wanted to ask what that question, because the point I wanted to make was that no matter what, I mean, it's always appreciated when somebody serves and they're able to give their time and. Uh, because I mean, you don't get paid for it, so uh, so you're doing it because you want to give back to the community. And I appreciate Melanie doing that. So at, at the end of the day, but we also have a responsibility. You know, that's one of the things I've always done when I've served on a board is that you have a responsibility to do the right thing for the community, but you also have to make sure that you start steps for when you leave, there's something there or, or to replace yourself. Uh, and, I, and I think it's important that we do. Um, so I, I wanted to. I, I appreciate you, Dewey, I mean, what, what you're doing, and, and I, I will support, you know, the, uh, the one-year extension, but I think we need to make sure that we don't let this happen again, that we're at this point where we're like, we can't let somebody go because of that, because then why have rules if you're always going to make exceptions, well, you know? Philly, this same thing happened a few years ago, and they did not change their bylaws. And they made the adjustments. But they just did the same thing you you said. Well, just let them do it for one more year. I mean, if they were serious, they would have changed their bylaws. But they're not. I mean, you can't just say, oh, this one person is so important, we're just going to let them, uh, you know, go. No, you can't do that. I mean, it, it sounds great. I, I think Melanie did a wonderful job. But you have bylaws. And I think it's wrong to do that. Is it okay to do this, Larry? I mean, it, to do it the way Dewey 
Well, I, th I think the city, the city's okay. I mean, Barbara's correct and it needs to meet the bylaws, but if I understood it correctly, the motion was the appointment with the change of the bylaws. If the bylaws aren't changed, then she's not appointed. That's right. Exactly right. Well, that's okay. Do y'all want to change your bylaws? Because obviously, last time that this happened, you didn't want to change your bylaws. You just wanted to put your people in. Still here, she's not. I, I, she's not here, but I think we were confused on her term limit. We thought she actually had one more year, so we were actually confused. Can you on that. come up here, please? <laughs> We were confused. I'm Connie Coots. Um, of course, I doesn't support realtors. I am on the board of the Odessa Housing Finance Court. Um, Melanie is, um, we thought she had one more term actually. And so she's just been such an asset to us, Barbara. We rely on her for um, her expertise. She's been a great asset to our, our board. We would hate to lose her at this point. That, that's not what I asked you. And yes, we will. The, last time, this. the last time this happened, oh, Dewey was on, I mean, Dewey was on there and he was just so important, we just can't get him off and we got somebody else on there. And we talked specifically about y'all changing your bylaws and you didn't do it. And yes, I, she's a lawyer, she's important, but have you asked any other lawyers? You're the one to appoint the, you know, the person. There may be. I know quite a few lawyers out there that get a lot of I, your time. I don't think the position of lawyer is as important as the position of the continuity of the project. Absolutely. 18 okay. months ago, this project was dead. We lost financing. We were not able to provide low housing opportunities for our people in Odessa. This group was able to make these changes, and I think with the bond people that are doing this deal, a continuity of your board until this is done is extremely important in the city of Odessa, in this project. To our citizens that are Dewey, may board. I ask you, when you were on the board and this council told y'all if we're going I to let you I wasn't on the stay, board of Odessa Housing. I don't know what time you're talking about, Barbara. I'm sorry. I was not on the board at Odessa Housing at the time that you said the I thought it was, was Cole and but anyway, the people yes. that were on the board year. did not change those bylaws. Well, this we motion heard. is contingent upon the bylaws being so changed. So was the last motion. Right. I don't, I don't that believe that was. I don't okay. know that, Barbara. I'm not going to argue on that point. Okay. I'm just saying that my motion now is contingent upon if y'all would like for Melanie to reserve. And it's our appointments to do so that the bylaws need to be changed in order for her to allow a one-year term in the other two for the regular terms that they have. Okay. Any other comment? Mike? A good one. Oh, I, you have I, any comment on this? No, I, I, I think she needs to stay. I, I, I think she needs to stay on there. I think she's a vital part of that, that board. And, and I... I don't think we should be changing right in the middle of the, I mean, that's a big project out there going on, and, and, and I, I think her expertise that she leads in that and is vital to that. For the record, Larry, you're saying that this is doable, we can do this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Two? No, I said you're aye. aye. Against and against. Well, you haven't asked for the answer. Yeah, I just said all in favor. Three of them said aye. All against, and I heard Malcolm. That's why I was okay, just. Okay, I, I didn't did not hear, hear you. that. I'm sorry. I'm against. I was a little you're, late. You're, he's, 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 he's against. I'm for it. He's oh, you're for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for it. yeah I was, my, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we do not have anything under appointment of officers, so uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned.